This is the Hofstra Radio Alumni Audio Yearbook, and today is October 7th, 2024. Today, my guest is one of the newest members of the Hofstra Radio Hall of Fame, John Santucci. John, welcome back and congratulations. Thank you, Brian. Good to be with you. Uh, it's a fantastic news and, and it's such a well-deserved honor. I'm wondering if you could put into words how it feels to be inducted into the Hofstra Radio Hall of Fame. Beyond weird. Um, <laughs> and I say that because I was actually on the executive board um, leading up to the station's 50th anniversary when uh, the Hall of Fame was established. It was, um, as I'm sure you well know, it was a project of uh, Bruce Avery's. It was something he was very passionate about, wanted to build, um, and thought that the 50th anniversary of radio at Hofstra University um, was the most appropriate time to unveil it. And it was. Um, and uh, putting together that event, building out the first Hall of Fame, the excitement around it, um, it it's very strange um, to think that well over a decade later, um, uh, I'm joining that club. And, and and to be honest with you, you know, I was nominated by um, by a very dear friend, um, Heather Cohen, who though we uh, did not go to Hofstra at the same time, um, you know, the power of this alumni association, we were brought together as friends uh, and colleagues sometimes in, in uh, you know, our professional lives. And when she nominated me, I said to her, just no, <laughs> um, and 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 not and not because it's like uh, you know oh oh gee you know I don't I don't need an award I I just feel and I and I still maintain this to be honest with you Brian I firmly believe that a Hall of Fame is something that should come at the end of one's career and you know to quote a former boss of mine. I still feel like I'm just getting started. I've had a great journey, an unbelievable ride. You know, I'm, I've just crossed 14 years with ABC News, which is scary mm -hmm. and unbelievable. Um, and I feel there's still so much that I want to do and learn and explore and travel. And um, uh, given this is online, I think I can say this, there's still a couple other things I have to fuck up and learn from, frankly. <laughs> um, and, and, and I really just, I don't know, there's something about it that just, um, I don't know, I don't want to use the word premature because I'm, I'm grateful for the honor. I am, but there's just something about it. I'll be honest with you. It's, um, it's been sticking with me. I just, I don't, I don't feel it's my time, but I'm, I'm very grateful to the alumni association for the honor. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm certain that comes through in your words and, and your feelings. And, and uh, I, I know from certain meetings of the, the Alumni Association that a number of people, in addition to Heather, were, were certainly campaigning for you, uh, your, your career, your accomplishments, your uh, relationship with the station, which I want to get to in a second. But um, I mean, if, if, if people don't know much about uh, your, your professional career, and I, if People are listening to this. I'm sure they do. But you've covered presidential campaigns. You were working at ABC News. You are covering uh, national and international news. Um, and as you said, I'm sure there's there's many more great stories and, and events to come. But um, in in thinking about your career accomplishments so far, uh, yeah. where did where does this fall in uh, in in ranking? Um, I think this falls in a place that. I hope I can continue to do right with by the recognition. And what I mean by that, and, and you alluded to it a little bit there, um, I'm very big um, on on giving back to Hofstra, as you know. You know, my, my wife and I travel back to campus quite often. We, you know, um, have taken several um, uh, students under our wings as mentors. Uh, I very proudly at ABC say I keep an active count of the Hofstra Mafia because there are a <laughs> lot, there are a lot of, of Hofstra alumni uh, that walk the halls and the studios of ABC News, which I'm very, very proud of. Um, you, you know, I, I feel that, um, you know, what Bruce wanted us to create, um, you know, as far as a career um, is, is one where you really believe in active service and servitude and, 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 and to give back to the place that gave you so much. So, you know, for me and where this ranks for me, it's just that reminder. It's that reminder to continue um, to elevate people, to bring people along for the ride, to 
um, to not make it always about you. Um, you know, and I, and I've learned that, as I mentioned earlier, you know, saying on the, I still have more, uh, screw ups, I'll, 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 uh, remove <laughs> vanity moving forward. But, you know, I've learned from my screw ups that, you know, when I can elevate somebody else and I'm not the person in the forefront, I'm not the person speaking on, you know, the morning network call with, you know, a thousand people going through the stories of the day. Um, or I can push somebody else to, you know, be in the driver's seat on a story or, you know, lead coverage on something. That's a win. Not every win needs to have your name associated with it. It, it can be about the people that you champion. So that's how I look at an honor like this, that, you know, I, I think that it's just that reminder that, you know, to the point of not being done yet, I'm not done yet trying to be a good mentor, trying to be a good friend, trying to be a good colleague. Um, obviously I'm still ambitious. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, you, you know, I remember a couple years ago we were at an event, Maria and I, and, uh, and some guy came up to us and, um, you know, had, had seen something I had done some, some, something related to, um, uh, I think a presidential campaign and, um, and said, well, you must be good. And I said, what do you mean? And he's like, well, you know, you, that's great. You covered a presidential campaign. You know, that's, that's a great accomplishment. You know, you could just coast. And I said, no, I'm, I'm not ghosting. I, I got a lot of stuff left to do. And I got a little annoyed to the point that like any good partner, Maria started squeezing my arm being like, mm -hmm. shut up. Um, but you know, it's just, it's just that um, I still got that drive. And, and I think that, you know, now that to, to be in a hall of fame means you need to also continue to, you know, uh, carry yourself in the way that is deserving of being in a hall of fame. So it's actually in some ways, a bit of a, a responsibility as well that, you know, that's, it's a mantle to maintain. And as I said, to only grow above. Hmm. Hmm. I love the way you put that. That's fantastic. Um, we've talked about this a little bit so far, but uh, the general question is, you know, what's your, been your relationship with Hofstra radio since graduation and you've alluded to uh, your friendship with Heather and what you and Maria have been doing with helping out uh, up and coming broadcasters. I wonder if you wouldn't mind going a little bit more into, into detail about what you and Maria are trying to do or any other relationships you wouldn't mind sharing. No, I mean, listen, I think that, um, you know, as you know, very well, um, I had a, unbelievably close relationship with Bruce Avery. Yeah. Um, and, and to think, and, and Brian, you were there to think that I spoke at Bruce's retirement party and what, two and a half months later, we, we were at his funeral. Um, it, it, it is, is something that I will actually never get over of how unbelievably quick life and time can go. Um, but you know, I would say that Bruce, Bruce did an unbelievable job at pulling me in and identifying um, people and students that, um, that he thought uh, I should form a relationship with. You know, there, there's a, a young woman, um, her name is Eli Finkelson. She was a station manager years after Marie and I graduated. And I'll never forget, Bruce said, you got to find her. You, you got to mm -hmm. connect with her. She, she's the future. And I had a conversation with her. I was blown away by her. I think she was a junior at this point, maybe a sophomore. And I remember saying to her, I'm going to get you your first job. And she started laughing and said, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, buddy. I did get her her first job. And she's going <laughs> on now several years working at ABC News as a, as a huge part um, of our growing studios operation where we build out documentaries for Hulu and whatnot. Um, so the relationships and people like that, being able to, you know, find students, mentor students. I, I, there's another kid um, graduated a couple years ago, um, ended up believing journalism was not for him, uh, ended up going into politics. And ironically, I worked with him on something just a couple of weeks ago. So, you know, I, I firmly believe in, um, in relationships, right? It's what I do. I began my career as a booker. Um, which is all about relationships. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like with Hofstra, it's, it's a long-term relationship. It's a long-term dating relationship. Um, you know, even um, Mark Lukashevitz, who's the new dean um, of the School of Communications, um, 
the, the way uh, he and I have formed a friendship and, you know, you find those six degrees of uh, separations, um, you know, people he worked with at NBC, I deal with at NBC or he worked with at ABC or right. It, it's just the strangest thing. Even, even a week ago, I was getting off the subway and I was heading into a meeting um, about election coverage and he was just leaving a meeting with the head of WABC, which is a proud partner of the radio station, as you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and and just those the, the way that those relationships blossom. I mean that that's something that is a fantastic thing. And and to be at a network um, that also believes right in in giving back, given that relationship between Channel Seven in New York and the station, um, it, it further cements you know the idea of you know tell me who you're with and I'll tell you who you are. And mm-hmm. I I love being a part of ABC news. I love being a part of radio at Hofstra university's history and, and, and to continue being a part of organizations um, that very much believe in giving back to people and making it about people. Um, that's something that I, that I, I really try to lean into and champion um, and something I continue to try to do with Hofstra. I'm, I'm going back in a couple of weeks uh, to speak to uh, two classes um, about the upcoming election I just think it's important. Um, it's it's something I, I wouldn't know um, I wouldn't know not to do it right. It's it's it, even when people ask me, it, I never say no. I just think it's the right thing to do. Wow, I, I I often ask this question when people talk about Ed Engels and that that moment. Like, did you know who Ed was? Like, when did you find out? Do these kids know? In a couple of weeks that who they're going to be talking to about the election and what's coming up. Have you, have you had a chance to to talk to other recent classes and, and, you know, what do you, what do you hope to to share with them when you, when you go in there? Um, it's funny. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in no way like Ed Engels, that's for sure. Voice and then some, um, especially his amazing career. But, um, I, in going to classes, the last couple of years, um, I've had people that have Googled me and, and have uh, had questions about some things. Um, there, there was this, I don't want to call it a scandal because it wasn't a scandal, but there was a thing that involved ABC and a few other networks years ago and it had happened. And I said to Maria, I said, I don't think anybody's going to ask about this. Nobody's going to read this. First question somebody asked about it. And I said, mm. oh, shit, <laughs> what do I do? But no, it's... Um, it's a strange thing to, to, to be in an environment like that where you are taking questions. And, you know, one of the rules I have when I speak to classes is that I start off the class and say, this is off the record. You know, I'm, I'm here. I'm happy to give, you know, um, uh, my very honest opinions and views and, 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 you know, perspective on where our business, our industry, and, and, you know, in my case, the political landscape is, but, um, you know, I, I, I will only do that if we all agree to an off the record conversation and that, and that has worked well over the years and is the reason I do it. Um, you know, I think that, um, one of the biggest things I get from, uh, from, uh, aspiring journalists and communications professionals is, um, you know, what's going on with the business. I get mm-hmm. that a lot. You know, what's the state of play? Can I actually have a life and a career and, and, you know, be able to, you know, have have purpose both in what I do, but also you know be able to have a life and and and, and money and all those things. Um, it's a tough time, you know, and I I don't sugarcoat it for people. You know, even for my team that reports to me um, at work, you know, I'm very honest and I tell them I I, I share what I know and I'm I'm clear when I don't. Um, and I think that right now um, it's a very, very, very confusing. I hate to use the word scary, but it's unfortunately it's appropriate. Um, it is a scary time. You know, look, look at what's going on with organizations through layoffs and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that a mantra I try to stick to, and I encourage my team to stick to, and, and the advice I give people is consistent in that do the work. And good work punches through and good work matters. You know, Diane Sawyer has a phrase that she uses on us at ABC. Do you want to change the world? And I'm a subscriber to that. I believe that what we do has impact. It matters. Um, right, not first. Something I also subscribe to. And, and when I talk to students, 
that's something that I really try to hone in on. You know, this is not about being a TV star. Let's be clear. Those days are over. There, there are no more Barbara Walters or Diane Sawyers in, in this generation upcoming. There are certainly people that have their moments, without a doubt. But if you want to do it, do it because we are a public service and we can do something good. And that's really what I try to share with young people. Hmm. No, that's great stuff. Uh, so many echoes of these people that you've mentioned, Bruce and Ed, and, and obviously you said, you know, Heather nominated you f- for this position, whether it was willing on your part or not, she did. So are, are there people that you want to take a moment and acknowledge or say thank you to at this time? You know, um, uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm not able to, um, to be there for the event. Um, yes. I recorded a little video. Um, just to say thank you. But, you know, I think that one of the things um, that struck me as I was uh, writing my, my very brief uh, remarks is, you know, you're shaped by your mentors. And one of the things that's, that is sad, but true with one exception, um, all the mentors I had at Radio Hofstra University are gone. Um, and to think that, you know, we lost Ed several years ago. Um, um, Bruce, you know, shockingly passed away just after his retirement. And then another woman that many people um, uh, across the generations may not know, but she was a fixture at the station for nearly 20 years, was Fran Spencer. Um, and she was incredibly close to my wife and I. Um, I had the honor of speaking at her funeral. And um you know, the impact she had on me um, was not so much as a journalist, it was so much as a person um, and how to be a decent person, how to be a good partner. Um, and uh, she threatened me if I, uh, <laughs> I ever lost Maria. And, uh, and here we are, you know, 15 years later, which is crazy. But, you know, I think that there are so many people at that time in life, you know, college, you're finding yourself, you're figuring it out. Um, I really credit Bruce, Ed, and Fran, um, with, with shaping me in different ways. They, they all gave me a little piece of them. Um, maybe without even realizing it, Bruce realized it because he shoved it in my face and reminded me repeatedly. (laughs) Um, but that was his way and we loved him for it. Um, you know, I think of other people, like I mentioned Eli and, and, and those relationships that I'm able to form post-college. Um, you know, I even think of, you know, uh, colleagues now, people that have somehow ended up at ABC that, um, you know, strange journeys for both of us, but, um, a, a dear friend, Andrea Clarides, who, you know, is now a photographer for the network. And, uh, I saw her at the conventions this summer, which was hysterical. Um, and, and neither of us knew we'd be there. Um, you know, the other person I think of a lot, and I mentioned the mentors, one remaining would be Sue Drucker, um, a longtime professor at the university, a very close ally and champion of radio at Hofstra university. Um, and uh, ironically, the last time I saw Bruce um, was speaking at a class with him, and it was Sue Drucker's class. And then, as you know, Bruce passed away shortly thereafter. Mm. Um, so, you know, I, 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 th- there's been so much of my relationship that I've tried to maintain, um, but there's been so much that's changed, too. Um, and I think that, you know, one of the things that I think about and advice I give people um, that, that join us at ABC. I remember when I started my career and my father, who, um, who was a lawyer, um, still is, but doesn't actively practice, um, he believed in as uh, a political mantra, you got to find a rabbi at work. Mm-hmm. And I've always looked at my journey as um, sticking in the uh, theological sense, uh, a God squad. And having multiple people that can advise you and support you and cheer you on throughout your journey. And I think about the people that I kept in contact and and relied on from Hofstra years ago. Many of that has changed. My God Squad 10 years ago is different than what it is now as it relates to the university. But there's new people. There's interesting, different um, helpful people in different ways. Um, you, you know, like I mentioned, Sue, I, uh, Mark Lukashevitz, certainly John Mullen and others that are running the station and doing a great job with it. Um, but I, I think that, you know, life is about evolving and learning from people. And that's why, you know, Heather nominating me is just so funny because, um, you know, our, our relationship 
began and when I was a student, and now we call each other about work matters. And that's what's pretty cool um, about about the radio station. You know, there, there was never, um, and this is a full credit to Bruce, there was never this idea of, ugh, you're a freshman, I can't talk to you, I'm a senior, right? There, there was none of that mentality. Um, it's the reason that Bruce was Bruce. He wasn't Professor Avery. Um, I think that that environment, you know, taught a lot of things about a way um, uh, to create a workspace that can champion others. And it's part of the thing that I take with what I do every day. Wow. Wow. Uh, it, it, it's plain to see how much Hofstra Radio means to you and to Maria. And, and I hope you uh, have some idea of how much the two of you mean to the Hofstra Radio community. And, and I'm so sad we won't see you on October 19th, but I'm certain we'll see you at other events uh, on campus in the future. And I, I just want to offer my, my heartfelt congratulations. And uh, I, I look forward to seeing you sometime in the, in the future. Thank you, John. Always appreciate it, Brian. Be well.